from the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Catholic and welcome to our domestic church media presence. We're glad to have you here with another episode. I'm Carrie Janice, Coordinator of Youth and Young Adult Ministries at Our Lady Peace Parish, and I'm here with my good friend, Mike. How are you today? I am doing very well, and uh, this is a beautiful day. It's like the, the first nice day we've had in a couple of days. We're recording on a beautiful, sunlit, blue sky day. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, it is great. But who knows what's in, in store for us in December, because you always seem to have those snowy days where it really hit you we are in winter yeah i know but the thing is i'm looking forward to it so i i can't wait yeah it's exciting i'm a winter baby yes and how's your advent going mike we were talking about advent last time we were here you know i am um still not quite there yet i will tell you (laughs) that even after everything father maz had to say to us last week i'm like oh my goodness i'm I'm not quite there yet i'm still working on it you know that's the thing that's the thing about advent we have four weeks to to really prepare ourselves (laughs) for christmas i gotta tell you in in the midst of week one i still need a little more seasoning i'll be honest yeah Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff going on Uh, i i actually beg to differ i'm doing great i love advent made my advent wreath on sunday and this past sunday with my godchildren a few of them and we put it together and lit the first candle and Did i was really? like i'm ready <laughs> i'm here it's it's i'm ready for advent you know it's funny uh, i actually saw your social media post about that i was very pleased about it and uh we did light the advent wreath for the first time last night nice. and i was thrilled about last it last night so you were a little late i'm a little late <laughs> it took us a little while to find the, the candles and then it's a typical household yeah. I can't remember where you stuck them last year um but i will tell you that uh, i was reminded by uh, a good priest friend of ours, uh, Father Hughes, the Vicar General of the Diocese. Uh, we uh, had put up a post about uh, Advent, and he, he quickly pointed out that in my post, I had the wrong candle lit. The first <laughs> candle is always supposed to be after the rose, uh, the opposite to the rose candle. Even though graphically it doesn't look right in the picture that I was I had posted, I was like, so I went back in there and fixed it. That's so sure. funny you say that because literally this morning I rearranged my candles because I was planning out the next you know few yep. weeks coming up, and I was like, wait a minute. This this is not going to work out for the rose to be the third week. So I literally <laughs> switched around candles. So I feel your pain. It's so logical. Yeah. And yet for years I was always, oh yeah, we start with the one closest. Like, no, that's not the order. Yep. Uh, you, know, you, have to, you have to think about it. We have to get these Catholic little but, things down. Hey man, they, they're, they're things that, uh, you know, the, the traditions of the church are there to, to be sort of benchmarks for mm-hmm. us. So we remember things in order and in process and the, the you know, humanity is a very orderly, well, let me say creation is a very orderly mm-hmm. entity. And uh, we as humanity have a habit of fouling up the order because of our own selfishness from time to time. So it's good to be pulled back to the order of That's life. That's a great way to relate it to faith. That's, there you go. Who knew? <laughs> the order of Advent wreath candles can right. totally relate to... To creation. The to atoms, creation. everything. There you go. God has it all planned out awesome. That's what it's nice. So what are we doing here today? This is I've actually been very much looking forward to this podcast yes. because um, I have never been to NCYC. I've never been mm-hmm. to a huge Catholic gathering. I'm actually very much looking forward to hearing about what happened with you and your your fellow attendees in Indianapolis. Yeah, so you know, last time we were talking about how coming up was our, uh, I had just gotten back from the National Catholic Youth Conference, a.k.a. NCYC, so we'll be referring to it mostly at that, and um, it's held in Indianapolis with over 20,000 youth, young adult chaperones from around the state, and so we are here today with some guests who were there, kind of representing some of the different um, community members that were there from our diocese. Um, so shortly we'll have joining with us Jose Rodriguez, our director in the Camden Diocese of Youth and Young Adult Ministries. We also have um, Milet. Milet, you want to say hello? Hi, I'm Milet Locasel. I'm the coordinator of Youth and Young Adult Ministry at St. Catherine Drexel in Egg Harbor Township. Okay, and great. So it's good to have you with us. So you'll be representing, as well as myself, some of the youth ministers that were there. There, yes. were, there were several from our diocese. I think it was around 10 of us yes. um, that were there. But you and I, um, as youth ministers, can relate in that way. And then we have a youth that attended for the very first time. So do you want to introduce yourself, Rihanna? Hello, I'm Rihanna Evans. This is my first time coming to NCYC. Um, I'm a senior in high school, and I was also an ambassador this time, so I got a great experience. Great. And where do you go to high school, Rihanna? I go to Williamstown High School. Williamstown High School. Okay, awesome. So you're, we're going to be hearing a lot of the different um, perspectives of NCYC that were there. So, You know, uh 
this might be a good opportunity. One of the things we've never talked about on the podcast since you've joined as a as a host is The Rock. Mm. You want to you want to talk about The Rock a little bit as we because you know we, we, we haven't just had a, have a whole episode well, on that one. We, we've done that once from in a previous yeah. podcast, and you're probably right. But just to just to give our listeners an idea yeah. of what uh, why a, here a, a public school kid is with us. Well. It's great having public school kids with us. I could say I was one of those public school kids in high school that was involved in my faith. And I know we'll probably get to a little bit of how you might um, get looked at differently or talked about in, in such ways. Um, and, and to kind of break that barrier, um, we had one of our youth group members back, it was 2013, I believe. And she said to me, can you start a club at our, at our public high school? Because we need a presence of faith. And I said, well, can I? Let me know. And, and so they, they did the legwork. They found out how to start a club, how we can make that happen, and how it's allowed that faith-based clubs are allowed in high schools, public high schools particularly. And what happened was we, we got the groundwork going. We put it all together. And here we are um, in our sixth year at Williamstown High School called The Rock. Um, we didn't want to scream Catholic club, you know, it might turn people away. We also wanted to be open to other other faiths. We didn't want to just make it exclusively Catholic, but our teachings are Catholic. And I think, Millette, you probably agree that sometimes in our youth ministries, we get non-Catholic members, right? Yes, we do. And we always welcome our doors, mm -hmm. whether they're Catholic, whether they're non-Catholic, Christian, whether they're Buddhist or whatever, especially in our area mm -hmm. in Egg Harbor Township, it's like a melting pot of different, um, different faiths. I mean, yeah. our public school actually has holidays for all the other denominations of faith mm -hmm. so it's we really open our doors to anyone yeah and it's, you know it's and i also find that we get people that are searching they yes. might not have been raised anything yeah. and um, we've had people come through the yeah. rcit and rcaa programs yeah. that way so it's really neat to see that i think every opportunity to be a face of christ every which way we can is always exactly. always welcome exactly so that's why at the rock we say oh open to all faiths yes. and we do get different members but we do get catholics and Rihanna, you've been to that club before and you know you've uh, enjoyed it right a few meetings you come to i know you play a lot of sports so it's not always easy yeah. but um you've been to a few times so it's neat to have that presence but particularly um bringing it back to ncyc ncyc is open to catholics um we actually in our in our group alone i know if marley peace had a, had a non-catholic with us a guy that is searching a young man and i know it was impactful for him to have that time together with us and so um it's not exclusive to catholics even though it's called the national catholic youth conference it doesn't you don't have to show your baptismal certificate at the door so <laughs> that is cool i yeah. didn't know that yeah so that's, that's awesome. really neat to kind of know the background of it so in uh, regards to ncyc so Millette, this was your Second time attending? Yes. Okay. Believe it or not, I've been serving as a youth minister for 12 years. But this is my second time to go. And it's um, amazing. A few, Several years ago, we would always just invite two teens from the parish and tag along with um, St. Bernadette's back okay. then or St. Gianna now. And Mr. Young has been so courteous and, and very, very generous and, you know, chaperoning our, our youth um, oh, before. That's nice. I didn't realize that. I know yes. Jeff Young has always attended oh, yes. every year that I've attended, but it's, and every I time he would he tell had me some of your youth like, going. Why, why don't you go? Well, back then, I mean, I said my oldest is nine, no, 11. I'm making her younger. And my youngest is six years old. So, you know, the age for them, for me to go and leave them for a long amount long amount of time That's is difficult yeah. difficult especially my second one has special needs too mm -hmm. so there's a diff you know a difficulty to leave her mm -hmm. little hurdle um, to get over yeah. in that way so four years ago i was able to go and i think it came at a time in my life where i needed it because jeff young always told me before what he would say was this is the event that actually nourishes him spiritually mm -hmm. and would like reintroduce that that passion again for youth ministry and i think with us you, you know anyone in lay ministry experiences that you know lows in our yes. in our ministry work oh, where sure. we feel burned out and i was also grieving the loss of my parents for mm -hmm. for a while so I think so I you needed, needed something I spiritually needed something. refreshing, yes. recharging, as it does to the youth, but it yes. also does to oh, all yeah. that. Oh, yeah. So that time. first time I went four years ago really did it for me. And mm -hmm. I, I told myself I'm not going back because of the bus ride. <laughs> but I went back we'll again. the bus ride. <laughs> here. But it was, you know, it was, it was amazing being able to go back and seeing all that amount of youth mm -hmm. and like, the adults together glorifying God and just it's. 
yeah. I keep telling the parents when I invite their teens, there, I cannot replicate this experience at the parish. No, you There's cannot. no way we can even replicate it at the diocesan no. level. So if you it's have a, the opportunity, opportunity that's unique unto itself. Oh, yes, sure. take them. And I always tell them, don't let finances um, hinder you from coming. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, we always strive to do, do fundraisers and yeah. ask for sponsors and all that. Yeah, so we'll talk just, about that yes. in just a minute. Let's tell our listeners, though, for those that maybe don't know about NCYC, you brought up a great point to me four years ago. So the National Catholic Youth Conference only happens every two years. Every two years. So a high school student can only get the opportunity, let's just say twice, twice in their high school yes. experience. And that's if they're coming to youth ministry for four years yes. of their high school time. I know I've had youth that came into youth ministry in their junior year or even their yes. senior year and might have missed it um an opportunity like that so it is unique that you get a, a, a basically two shots at it yes. in your high school experience so yep. it's great that you you push that and i think ryana uh, um you said it was your first time attending so yeah you would have attended as a sophomore was it something that hindered you in that way that you weren't able to go was it sports or it just didn't feel called to it or why why now your senior year I think it was a mix of things. Um, I'm usually always busy, but I didn't really know much about it. And when I saw how much it cost, I was like, I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware of all the fundraising that goes on and how much people help out. So I didn't really try to go, but this mm -hmm. year it was so different because from the beginning, Carrie, you were telling me, you have to go, this experience mm -hmm. is like no other. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through it. I'm gonna miss school, which I mm -hmm. hate doing, mm -hmm. but it was so worth it. Yeah. yeah Anything God. else didn't matter. I had to be there. Yeah. God always gives us back so much when we give him our time and our energy, and which is a lot of getting to NCYC. So you mentioned about the um, fundraising, yes. and, I, and I can totally talk about that as well. Um, as a youth minister, there is a lot, and it's a lot of coordinating. Yes. It's not just, okay, we're going to fundraise, here we go. It's a lot of coordinating with your youth. Um, what kind of fundraising did your St. Catherine Drexel's youth group well, perform? Well, this year we did a car wash, um, and I was kind of hesitant to do it in the beginning because we've never done it before, mm -hmm. and a lot of the clubs and the anything that the high school does usually does that as a fundraiser, so I was worried that we might not get the same support or turnout for it since we're already competing with the other clubs oh, and the yeah. other groups in the area. But we did it over the summer and it was a quick transition to like getting it done because of we originally had another fundraiser plan which didn't pan out. Um, so we worked on that. But so was just that one? Just that we one? did that. Um, we approached our, our Knights of Columbus too. Oh, nice. at, yeah, they're um, always at so, Catherine so generous. They're very, very generous with their with their help, financial support. Um, I think they did um, a golf over over the spring, and oh, part like of a golf the golf tournament. Yep, uh, part of the proceeds to that went to um, to NCYC to help support us, and we also applied for a grant from the mm -hmm. National Federation for Catholic Youth Ministry. Because mm -hmm. two years ago, we had three young people go. One uh, one chaperone, well, young adult chaperone and myself. Um, and we didn't apply for a grant mm -hmm. then. My goal this year was to at least double that, the amount of participants, mm -hmm. and also capturing different cultures in our parish because we are a very diverse oh, that's parish. Great. We yeah. have a, a group of Vietnamese. We have a different groups of Hispanics. We have African Americans. Mm -hmm. We have Filipinos. We have. So I wanted to be able to make sure that most of those cultures are represented yeah, in, sure. in the co Catholic Youth Conference. And that's what I was pushing for when I applied for the grant at uh, NFCYM. So did you receive the grant? We did receive a oh, grant from great. them, which yeah. was very good. Plus also increase the number of young men that we could invite to NCYC. Oh, fantastic. Because I noticed with ministries, not just with youth ministry, but even for older older ministries, it's we, we get a lot of female participation. Um, for some reason, our men and mm -hmm. our young men are kind of on the low side mm -hmm. in that terms was of insightful numbers. insightful for you as a youth yes. minister. So it was very intentional for me to really seek young men that could, you know, join us and hopefully spread, mm -hmm. you know, the number of young men joining youth ministry and other church ministries that we have um, in the parish. 
So how many young men and how many young women did we you have had attend? four young men? Mm -hmm. I usually I in, in, uh, originally had four young women too mm -hmm. come, but one uh, wasn't wasn't able to go because of uh, family reasons. And then I had three junior aides. They were the original three that came with me two years ago, mm -hmm. and they were like so invigorated by the experience. Mm -hmm. They came back, you know, as junior aides. So if you're not able to come back. As a high school student, there is an opportunity to come back as a junior aide if you know you're yeah. staying local or whatever. Too. Yeah, we had a good amount of junior aides in our uh, group as well, and it, it seems to be the retention rate of those that want to go. They're like, <laughs> I just want to go. Can I help? And, um, it just it it tends to happen that way. So we we're very thankful that we were yes. able to bring those junior aides with us. Um, but also we had, uh, from our group, we had um, 21, I think, youth attend. And so uh, That's and during, group, yeah. during the sessions, there's a lot of different opportunities for breakouts, even just attending the different lunch and when you're gonna go. Um, it's really difficult to kind of have all 21 travel together. So they are helpful in that sense. But as you mentioned, you get so much out of it. The junior aides get so much out of it, the chaperones, and of course the youth themselves get a lot out of it. So we have um, Jose Rodriguez here. He just joined us, so thanks for hey being guys. here. <laughs> thanks. Um, Jose, so you are in the role of youth and young adult um, ministry for the diocese. You're on the diocesan yes. level mm -hmm. of Camden. Um, how was this experience uh, for you? Because I know it was different this year than it was last year for you. So give us a little background on um, how this experience was for you and, and kind of how you got a little thrusted into the newer experiences oh. that you had this year. <laughs> no, yeah, sure. Um, Definitely, 2017 was a lot easier um, because we had uh, our beloved Greg Coogan with us. Um, so I know Coogie still listen, so hi Greg. Hi Greg, um, we miss you. <laughs> we miss you. Um, but yeah, so so him being the director of the office and me being the coordinator, I was just kind of his right hand. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever he needed, I was there. But uh, for, for the most part, when we get to NCYC, it's really you guys who, who take your groups and you guys plan your sessions, when exactly like when you guys are going to go mm -hmm. to lunch, everything. And we're kind of just there to uh, oversee and make sure everything Yeah, you're like the support, mm -hmm. you know, but you're not, you're not planning it for us. Right. So uh, in 2017, I really, uh, you know, I was there. And, and like I said, I was, you know, I, I think my main job was to carry around those monstrous binders in 2017 because, <laughs> um, you know, those, all, the those, all the information, information yeah. and all that. <laughs> so Greg was like, all right, you know, uh, you're here. So here, you know, take these. Um, but we 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 did it together and, and it was great. But I got to uh, enjoy NCYC for the first time as a participant, which was um, life changing. So mm -hmm. I, I still reference 2017. Going back now. Um, and missing Greg, not having Greg with us. Um, so Greg was blessed with the opportunity to go work as the uh, secretariat for the Office of Catechetical Formation. So in, in the Diocese Cleveland, of Cleveland, right? mm -hmm. um, the secretariat, the director, the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but um, So it was before NCYC. Yeah, before so NCYC. you were past the torch of being the main... Yeah, so... The um, main coordinator. We took it head on and... and um, Father Frill was a huge help. You carry where you know all my all the youth ministers. We all came together and uh, we managed. And I think mm -hmm. I, I really think it, it, it went really really well. Mm -hmm. um, if it would have went any better, it would have been weird. <laughs> so I think it went really yeah. really well. Um, and again, looking at it from this point, this time from being, you know that that guy that everyone has to come back to and and hey make sure we're meeting here and we're doing this. And, mm -hmm. um, it gave me more of an appreciation for what you guys do and the work that our youth ministers do because it is not, and I said it last night, uh, last night I was lucky enough to be here with you, Carrie, and, and, and uh, the group from um, Hamington. And on Sunday night, uh, we did something similar, dinner and with our pilgrims and their parents for Christ the Good Shepherd and Violin. And I told the parents the same thing. Um, appreciate your youth ministers, pray for your youth ministers because it is not easy. It's not an easy job. Thank you. Um, and we, you know, and I got to see that. Like I, I do it. You know, and I mm -hmm. do it at my home parish, yeah. and and it's one thing when you're in it and you're just doing it, and, mm -hmm. and you do it, and you give you give everything that you have. But sometimes, you know, it's 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 definitely underappreciated. So oh, well, thank you for that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of coordinating and yeah. communication that has to happen, and it's it's as you know, Millette, with 
youth, it's not just with the youth, it's with their parents Parents as well. So it's like you're doing everything twice. You know, you're talking to the youth and the parents, and you're trying to coordinate from the fundraising to getting us there to the meetings beforehand, the prep, and then, of course, while we're there. There's yeah. a lot that oh, happens. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, you know, the, the running everything by your pastors and yes. making sure you have oh, the yeah, space. Oh, you forgot that aspect, too. <laughs> making sure you have the space. Yeah. Oh, well, Legion of Mary's meeting in that room. Yeah. Yeah. There's like three of them and there's I 90 know. of us. So I can we? Um, it is. It's it's a juggle. And like I said, watching you guys, the way you guys move, the way you guys work, uh, it was fantastic. Oh, thank it's, you for that. So it was good. So let's get to going to NTYC. So um, we took a bus ride there, yeah. a long bus ride. Everyone always likes to talk about the bus ride, but it was really not the most exciting part, so we'll skip through that. It was it was long, and it was through the night, and we got to sleep a little bit. That's, <laughs> we'll leave it there. But we get there, and um, NTYC always kicks off with regional masses. So um, the regions – is NC, NCYC set the regions, like who's with what, I guess? The – so um, the regions come from, from – the breakdown of the, like the USCCB, so okay. every, so that's where so, that's so from, the regions are. Yeah, the regions. So even when like a couple of or during the summer we did the Quinto Encuentro process with all within Hispanic ministry, it was all regionalized. Okay, so region, that's something that's yeah. in mm-hmm. place. So we're region three. We're, we're region three. New Jersey and all of Pennsylvania together. Yep. Di- all the dioceses um, together. There's five from New Jersey and another ch- five, six. Six. I should know this. We're going to get there. Six, yeah, six, six. So. Sorry, sorry six. for those that we misrepresented. Mm-hmm. So the six dioceses from New Jersey and then those from Pennsylvania together for a mass, which was around a couple thousand people in that mass. It was really yeah. um, amazing and powerful. We had some of our own priests that traveled with us, um, Father Nevitt, Father Josh Nevitt, and Father Ed Friel, who served in that mass. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we then it kind of kicks it off, you know. So mass is our greatest prayer and to pray together to start off NCYC and then we head over um, so that's in the convention center in India in the Annapolis and then we head over to the Lucas Oil Stadium also known as the Colts home field where the Colts in the Annapolis Colts play and so we're filling this stadium and um, we're, we're walking in and, and what was it like for you Ryan I know you came from the ambassador meeting but just walking into that stadium for the first time and seeing all these lights and and people and energy what was that feeling like for you walking to the first opening night when I first walked in I pictured it nothing like that it was so overwhelming how many people were there I didn't think there was that many young people attending and of course I've seen pictures from years prior to it but seeing it in person it just makes it so much more real so all the lights and everything like I remember it was like a pinkish purple like glow Mm. and it was just so beautiful and of course there's like music playing just awesome yeah and they picked um a great band to kind of pump up the crowd for king and country um so they did the opening night um is there a song in particular that you like from that band that you that stuck with you or one that you know Burn the Ships. Burn the Ships, yeah. So that yeah. seems to be one of the ones. They're a great band. If you haven't um, heard them, um, they're really neat. They're one of those crossover bands, so they play both on secular radio stations but also on Christian radio stations, which is always admirable in our Christian bands and in our, um, you know, just to hear music that people can get something out of, not just listening on the Christian radio station. Mm-hmm. So they started off, and then we had we have keynotes each night and each morning at these general um, big sessions in the stadium. And then there's breakout sessions during the day. So we went to Friday. Um, there was a general opening session, and there was Immaculee was there, right? Um, Millette, is there anything that spoke to you from Immaculee's session? Oh, her, her experience um, of losing her family. I, I can't imagine um, like losing everyone you you love Mm -hmm. and then still being able to hold on to that Mm -hmm. to that faith Um, I was mentioning to you that I you know I was grieving the loss of my parents and grieving again this year the second time I I I came with the sudden loss of my Mm brother-in-law so as um, you know as I go through these emotions and with my family trying to help them I go back to the to, to, to Immaculate's um, experience about you know faith and holding on to that and seeing you through because I don't I can't imagine going through any suffering or any pain that will help me still be whole. You know, if if 
if not, you know, if I don't hold on to Christ, if I don't hold on to Mother Mary as 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 she did, mm-hmm. I don't think I'll come out of any 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 de- um, depression or any any grief like that, right. like that's really soul wrenching. Um, she was in the uh, the Rwanda genocide. Yes, so yes. To have lost, she lost uh, everybody. I everybody, think, her parents, her and to be brother. hiding, you know, in in a small space for what three months? I think three that's what she said. Not stall. knowing what's mm-hmm. going on out there, mm-hmm. and to be able to come out of there alive, but realizing that you know everyone she knew and loved was gone, and still be able to go forward with that because of her deep, deep faith and love for Christ and for Mother Mary's help, I think that's the only way to go through, I think, anything um, without losing ourselves or destroying ourselves. Mm -hmm. I thought it was neat that they chose her, I I shouldn't say neat, providential, that they chose her to be the lead-off keynote speaker the first day, the first morning, um, where everyone's like, you just got this taste Friday night of this, just being in awe of the right. awesomeness and wonder and grandness of our church and how big it is. It's just so much bigger than our yes. local youth groups and our, our local diocese. It's grander than that. And then we go to such, like, we have such hype for the next day. And it's a very serious, very yeah. serious talk. Like, she's not one to be all bells and whistles and jumping up and down. Mm-hmm. Like, some of the speakers are. They're very youth-friendly. Um, but she, I've seen her speak, actually, in the Camden Diocese 10 years ago in ACCA, at Christ the Redeemer. I saw her there. And it was almost like the same talk where there yes. was many adults there. But the youth were, where they were listening. Yes. They were intent. They were hearing her words. And, and, they, and they stuck with a lot of them about the prayer and, and the answer to prayer that she spoke about. I thought right. that was pretty amazing. And it uh, also, if I may, if I may course, add, yeah. um, away from as much as I know the youth I have in, in my ministry, there's still certain things I do not know about them. And it was through her experience that I got to know more about one of my youth participants, um, Adrian wow. Sewan. He experienced the same Who's thing the with, his, Herald, with, right? his, yeah, mm-hmm. with his parents, um, escaping from Liberian mm-hmm. genocide. And wow. you, we don't realize how widespread, you know, this crimes against humanity is. Uh, ex- they're still happening, and how people who have, you know, have experienced it are very, very close to us with how world this, how small the world is becoming. Mm-hmm. Right. And that became, you know, that whole because <clears throat> Emekale is kind of like that far person. She's a celebrity and, right, and what have yeah. you. But it brought her experience so much more closer to me because of my youth. Mm, that's and, amazing. And he is just, you know, like in my mids and having yeah, experienced one of something your own. like yeah. that. Yeah, that's, wow. Well, then Mackie Lee left us with such great words, and she talked about um, praying the rosary and, and pray, praying to God, asking him to answer your prayers. And right. I think that stuck with a lot of the youth, yes. for sure. And then we went on to our breakouts. So there was a lot of really great um, breakouts to choose from. Um, some of the youth have to um, take on, they, they don't have to, they choose to take on a role of ambassador roles. Um, Jose, you helped coordinate the ambassadors a little bit with Greg's help as well. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know a little bit about that program to share that how the youth um, are selected by their youth ministers and then how they're incorporated into the whole NCYC experience? Yeah, so um, early on, for NCY, NFCYM sends out that email, that invitation to to our office to send out to all the youth ministers to invite um, any youth that might be interested in being an ambassador. Um, uh, it's really open to, to the young person to say, yeah, I want to do that. High schoolers, uh, high right? schoolers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, they get the opportunity. They go to a training the first night, um, and they receive an opportunity to meet. And they get assigned to certain breakouts, mega sessions, or smaller breakout sessions, um, uh, and they get a chance to meet the presenter. So what that does for them is that gives them a, a, a little bit more of an encounter that some of the others wouldn't get. Um, so they they meet with the presenter. They ask them questions. You know, uh, do you have kids or where mm-hmm. are you from? You know, how did you grow up? What do you like to do? And then they, they, always, throw, they always throw in fun questions yeah. though, too. Mm-hmm. They'll throw in like, do you like Pepsi or Coke? Or right. You know, what mm-hmm. are you having for Thanksgiving dinner? Because this is a week before Thanksgiving. So they always like to throw in the fun, yeah. fun break. So they get know, an experience that they get something mm-hmm. different. 
Uh, and then they get out on, on, on the stage in front of all these other young people, in front of their peers and adults that, that chose to go to that session and introduce them. And they mm -hmm. kind of hype. They're, they're they're basically hype men for the presenters. Yeah, yeah. They get the crowd all um, riled yeah, up yeah. and excited. Mm -hmm. um, but the part that I find that that's the most touching is when they when they pray when mm -hmm. they pray over the presenter. Mm -hmm. So here comes this national presenter, all these acclimates, you know, like yeah. Some of them stuff. have traveled the world yeah. in, in giving presentations. Um, and it's something different when you see, you know, one of one of our kids up there and, and praying over this person and, and, and asking the Holy Spirit to give this person words. And it's 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 beautiful because, again, it's, you know, this is somebody from, from the Diocese of Camden. Mm -hmm. that's, that's fantastic. Or, you know, from Washington State or Wisconsin. It's just young people taking on their responsibility. And it shows that our young people are capable of these types of things. Sure, yeah. Um, and should be invited to, you know, uh, when, when our pastors and, 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 and when our parish leaders see this, all right, well, if you were able to stand up on that stage in front of X amount of people and, and, and execute that, what can you do for us here? Right, So exactly. it's, kind of a, it's kind of a doorway and opening to, mm -hmm. to that church life, that community being, being part involved, of a larger community. Yeah. If I may add, too, the prayers that they were actually saying at the mega sessions and even at the youth ambassador training, they were made by youth themselves. Mm -hmm. yes. one, from, one from our diocese, actually. Yes, we actually got asked and you to had be... One too, right? um, Mm -hmm. generate a prayer for the youth ambassador mm -hmm. uh, training so it's amazing mm -hmm. how you know youth can actually pray and mm -hmm. put together a, a, a really really meaningful prayers Absolutely. and it speaks to um, you know what they have in their hearts and in their yeah. minds and coming coming across in, in in the prayers and I think if you you it's so great of NSCYM to give them youth this opportunity because if you actually ask them we are so surprised like wow they wrote that like why are we asking these youth to do more like we we need to do that and it always right. reminds me to like include them like i don't have to do all this like yes. and i shouldn't like because when we give them this opportunity when we give them this opening it's incredible what they can do mm -hmm. and Rihanna, you were one of those youth that were up there at a mega session so yeah. it wasn't just a small <laughs> breakout with like 100 200 people which is still a lot of yeah. people to talk in front of for an adult a youth anyone but you were um in a mega session um, presenting op opening for it was Paul J. Kim, right? Yeah, who is a, a well known Catholic speaker, especially to the youth. So it was packed, there was a couple thousand people there. What was that like for you? Were you, were you nervous? Were you scared? Uh, how was that whole experience for you? So, walking to the hall that it was going to be in, I'm shaking. My friend Jared is like, Calm down, you're gonna be fine, no one's gonna make fun of you. But I'm just nervous. I've never spoke in front of this many people. So I remember asking Paul J. Kim the questions. I was calm talking to him, but it, it was awesome to talk to him too. So I was shaking, probably sweating a little bit. I kept <laughs> saying, I'm nervous. I can't do this. I'm nervous. <laughs> as soon as I stepped on the stage, all those nerves were gone. Everyone in the audience, it was like open arms, one family, and it just felt natural. And I remember taking my phone out, taking a video with everyone, getting a big selfie, and it was just amazing. Because you're I don't speaking think, to your peers, so yeah. they love that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, let's take, let's get in this girl's photo. It was awesome. I don't think I'll ever experience something like that again. And like you said earlier, some of the youth wrote their um, prayers. So Jade Biddle from our youth group, she read her own prayer that she wrote for Paul J. Kim, and I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah, that was. As a youth minister to witness that, that was one of those moments, like proud proud parent moment, like, <laughs> those are my kids on the stage, that's the prayer they wrote, and that was really neat uh, to see. What kind of questions did you ask Paul J. Kim? So, did you know Did you know who he was yeah. prior to that? Okay, so you're familiar with him. So what did, what did you prepare, what did you ask him? So I asked him how he got into beatboxing, and he told me he was going to talk about that a little bit more. So I was asking him about his kids, um, his social media. I asked him what his favorite Christmas movie was. Mm. It's Home Alone. thought that nice. was pretty cool. <laughs> so it was just getting to know him, really, stuff that um, the youth would like to know before he went on in case they didn't know him. And I think I did a good job. You did a great job. So. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were awesome. If you said you were nervous or sweating, it did not show when you stepped up on that stage. <laughs> you. you walked up with confidence and you delivered the 
in the microphone beautifully and delivered your introduction for him and then passed it on to Jade who did a great job with the prayers you said Jose it's really you're like wow those are that's beautiful to see them extend yeah. their hands over that speaker they did a great job with that and Jared was on that and another yeah. uh, young person so in the ambassador role they not only introduced the speaker but they actually help run the session make it smooth so mm -hmm. not everyone's up on the stage and some some ambassadors they like to lead but they like to lead from behind they're right. not in the foreground in the forefront on the stage with the microphone so we had another young person i'm sure you did too millette and there was a few from our diocese that just greeted people at the door and if the session got full they would hold up a sign that the session was full which is not the easiest job because when some <laughs> of the kids want to see their right. favorite speaker it becomes a little difficult i know you had a little run in with yeah, that right a little bit but um but you did a great job it's always good to again put them in these roles of leadership and being being able to um just you know witness in a way that you you would expect an adult to do that but no this is a youth conference let's give them their space and their place in our church and you guys did a great job with that so thank you so um we went to a lot of the breakouts so, um jose did you get to attend any of the breakouts i, did. You did. I, I, I know I you managed. had a lot of other obligations yeah. during it but you which ones did you attend what did you did. like about I, them? um so i was actually really excited because this year ncyc had for the first time a mass um uh, in Spanish, it was a Spanish. It was oh, a full nice. Spanish mass. So I was like dead set on that's what I'm gonna mm -hmm. do because I want to go and I want to see and listen and uh, the Holy Spirit had other ideas. <laughs> so um, a good friend of mine, Father Joe Espiat, um, he and I—he's awesome. Yeah, he and I have have become super close um, since I've started working for the diocese, um, and uh, he's—I <laughs> kept bumping into him. And it was, hey, Father Joe, and his, hey, Papa, how are you? And I'm like, great, I'm glad to see you here. And then 20 minutes later, Father Joe, here, thousands of people, and we just kept bumping into each other. <laughs> and he finally said, he said, um, he said, Jose, I, I, I have a breakout session. It's on masculinity. I want you there. Oh, I need, wow. he's like, well, he says, I need youth ministers there. I need the directors there. I need mm -hmm. um, the, the guys in this role. I mean, it's try and get as many guys there as you can, but it's, I need. And I'm like, oh, man, he's going to put me to do something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Father, I want to go to that, that Mass in Spanish. And he says, I was like, you've been going to Mass in Spanish your whole life. <laughs> like, <laughs> totally called you out. Like, you know, you, I need I'm you more. I'm pretty sure you know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know how it, what it's going to sound like. <laughs> Just, you know, come out. And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? And he's right. Let me, let me see what he needs. So I was there early, and there was um, this awesome group, and I cannot remember their names. Um, but it was it was this, this great group opened up for him because he's he likes to uh, Father Joe's really he's a lyricist. Mm -hmm. That's just a really nice way of saying he's a rapper, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there was another priest there, um, and he was also it was an older an older priest who in his in his youthful days he used to get into a lot of trouble and stuff like that in and mm -hmm. out of jail. Um, he actually lost both his legs. So he's on two prosthetics, but he was up there killing it. I mean, he was wow. rapping and moving, and I'm like, all right, I can't complain about the pain in my knees anymore. I mean, this guy's yeah. <laughs> moving around. So then finally Father Joe comes up, and he does a fantastic job. Um, he spoke in our diocese a few years ago, Yes, right? he did. He yeah. came to one of I our uh, youth congresses, and he yeah. spoke on masculinity, and he spoke about the, the, the role of a, of a young man, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then he spoke you know he also he also spoke to his brother priest and their role as men mm -hmm. and, and it's bigger than just being you know bigger than being a priest you're still a man and you have to be a role model mm -hmm. um and he spoke to the parents and then he asked um i'm sitting right in front of him because i got there first and he's looking at me he's like are you ready and i'm like i don't know what i'm ready for i don't know what you're and i started sweating and panicking because i'm like <laughs> it was another mega session i'm like i didn't sign up for this uh -huh. i don't know what you want from me um and he called us all up um, on the stage, uh, right in front, he called okay. all the all the youth ministers, all any directors that were there, and he called us in front, and he just had us look at um, all these young men, and and um, and their and their parents or their chaperones, um, mm -hmm. and just kind of look at them, and see that like that's these are the men mm -hmm. of the church. Yeah, they're not boys. These are the men yeah. of the church, wow. and he had us pray. So he was um, Proverbs. 27 I believe where it talks about how iron sharpens iron mm -hmm. and one man needs another man he goes you men have to pray for these men wow so we prayed over those men and the, you know those 
young men, and then they got up and prayed for us. So it was almost he almost copied what mm-hmm. had happened earlier with yeah. the, um, the, the kids praying over their youth, youth ministers. Uh, but there was something about it being. It was like a guy to guy moment. Yeah, yeah. it's so needed. Um, it's yeah, so needed. we need more of that. Yeah. It was just, it was fantastic. He always, he always does a great job. Um, he gets to the men too. I mean, he yeah. has a way of reaching them just through his personality and well being able to rap and all mm. that. He just has a way to break through. He, he, and it was, it was a. I saw a different side to him because uh, he did. They didn't use any music. Uh, he oh, didn't. Wow. But like, and he spoke very straightforward like he didn't sugarcoat anything it was you know at one point he 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 called out his brother priest saying you guys have to do better mm-hmm. you know your homilies are boring mm-hmm. you're bo- <laughs> and these men aren't because a football is more attractive to men now than mass mm-hmm. is and it's get on it and mm-hmm. then he said but don't he says but i'm not just going to talk to my brother priest i'm talking to you guys too get on them for that mm-hmm you know, be responsible. Yeah, you know, it's good to hear because uh, I've, I've, I'm often able to sit in on meetings with Bishop Sullivan and, and the priests, and that's a common refrain for him when he's talking to his brother priests that, you know, you have to make this relatable. You, you can't just stand at the lectern and spew and, and not have not uh, not have it land, right? right. And, and you have to do things. You have to be amongst the people. If there's one thing about Bishop Sullivan, I, I often – congratulate Bishop Sullivan for several things that he does. One of the things that he's great at is going out and being with the people and understanding them and knowing them Definitely. and receiving them. He is a excellent um, role model for, mm-hmm. for priests of what you should be doing in your in your in your churches and your in your parishes. Which isn't to say that the laity doesn't have, you know, doesn't need mm-hmm. to be you know, I mean Carrie, you are a shining example of someone who who has taken life by the horns, or their their spirituality by the horns, and and occasionally, maybe by the ear, some young people <laughs> and bring them bring them to more. So th- it's something Thank that the you. laity can do. It's something that the priests right. need to do. Um, and certainly, uh, diocesan staff like yeah. like good Jose and myself. I think we all just need to be reminded, no matter where we are, if you're a priest, if you're a lay yeah. person, mm-hmm. like. We we we're always have to do better. Yeah. You know? yeah, you are you are you are in not in every way. I don't mean it this way, but we are ministers of the people, mm. of the people, from the people, and we have to remember that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's important. You know, you you in this day and age, we can't rely all the time on the the men wearing collars to yes. be the ones who can be because they can't. They physically can't be there everywhere, but we can. Sure. Right. Yes. All of us can. Yeah. 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 And our, Being there it, supporting spirituality. You're so. called yeah. to it at baptism. You're called to be priest, yeah. prophet, and mm-hmm. kings. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it, and we have to live those 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 roles in our spirituality and share that with others. And that was really the, the, the foundation of his talk. That's great. It was several things you need to be a true man in the church. Um, oh, man, he did such a great job. I took way too many pictures and videos. I, my phone is stuffed. <laughs> it's okay if you're, you're kind of creepy about that, but that's, that's fine. It's it was like, just it's, good. It's, okay. it's good. You don't want to miss out in those no, moments. I did, yeah. You're like, I, I need to hear this. We, actually, they, they sell the recordings of the talk. So yeah. if, if you wanted to purchase them as a diocese or as an individual, you can actually get them because it's actually probably needed to like hear it not just once, to keep listening and reminding ourselves of the different talks that we hear. You know, and that's true. And you probably face this on a semi-regular occasion, Carrie. There, like myself, I am a, I am an introvert. I am someone who has a very difficult what? time. I, oh, it's true. <laughs> what? I, I, I know you're going to find that hard to believe, but I, I here I am, uh, a communications director and a podcast host and someone who does public speaking. I hate being in front of other people. I hate walking into a room. I've been looking to start working out, and I'll be honest with you, there are times I don't even want to go to the gym because I just don't feel feel like being around other people. But but that anxiety, that the, that anxiety that all of us have to some degree, will mm-hmm. often stop us from doing good work. And mm-hmm. right. it, you got to think about it as when it comes to proclaiming our faith, you know, it's an important job. It's it's life changing. And we all need to become much more confident mm. and comfortable and being able to step forward, even if sometimes you don't feel like we should be the ones to do it. Truth be told, those are the people that should be doing it. The right. ones that are, I, like I am, 
I'm 47 years old, and I've not been a shining example of Catholicism for my entire life. I'm a bit more of a better example than I was, um, but it's taken a long time, and they people might want to hear my story, or they might want to hear your story, or Jose's story, mm-hmm. and Carrie's, I mean, everybody's story. And it's, yes. it's, it's important to showcase all of our flaws and the fact that we're still right. trying to be a good Catholic. It's true. Well, mm-hmm. if you think about it, it's really us just being the vessel for the Holy Spirit to speak through us. So we really don't have to worry about not having the talent, not having Mm. the words. If we just rely solely on the Holy Spirit, oh, you'll be, you'll be surprised and really amazed at what can come through your mouth. Because my husband and I were just talking about it. He was just talking about just letting, Sometimes life throws you lemons, mm-hmm. and sometimes life throws you lem- uh, watermelons, is what he said. But <laughs> it's like, you know, it's he can make sense of all the negative things that are happening now in our mm-hmm. life. And he was like, wow, that just came out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. That didn't come out of my that mouth. That was the that Holy Spirit. I said, that's the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. working through you. Right. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's just and amazing. the more we open ourselves up for that oh, and yes. ask God, like, use me. You know, yes. I've noticed yeah. that. Oh, if yeah. I just uh, submit my own will and say, God, where do you want me? Yeah. What do you need me? Well, that's how I'm here, actually. That's how my youth ministry that's right. because I did that. <laughs> that's right. um, and I continue to do that in my ministries and in, in yes. my work and in my, in my marriage and everything. Yes. So God, and then he uses that. He uses our yes, just like he used Mary's yes. Mm-hmm to change the world and that's what we're you know called yeah, to like do I, I tell my young adults often 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 this is you guys aren't called to be perfect mm-hmm. you are not called to be perfect you're called to be Christ-like and mm-hmm. work on that mm-hmm. and try to get as close as you can but the only perfect one is hidden we're, we're never going to reach that we're and never going to be perfect yeah never our blessed mother. <laughs> we're, we're never going to be perfect yeah it doesn't matter true. you know so don't don't strive for perfection but strive mm-hmm. to be Christ-like strive sure to serve others and, and, and be open and loving, so. Yeah. So. Yep. And we know, we, you're, you're always gonna, you're, you're not always gonna succeed at that. You will fail no, sometimes. Absolutely. And it is okay to fail. Mm-hmm. I tell people this all the time, it is okay to fail so long as you try again. Right. So long as you try again. You learn from your mistakes. That actually brings us to the theme, which we didn't even talk about. Oh, I like the theme. Which was blessed, broken, and given. Yep. So we heard a lot about that on this NCYC experience, blessed, broken, and given was the theme of the whole entire weekend. So, And they talked about how we are broken and how we need God and we need confession and we need our faith to keep us. And now we're given. We're given out to others to, to give this word to others, to share with others. So there was a real big theme of that throughout the entire NCYC experience. Yeah. And you didn't even know that, Mike, and here you are. Well, coming in blind. Hey, man, you know, I told you. Communications uh, director, pretty smart. No, it's good. Uh, <laughs> no, I just dumb luck, but, it, but it's something that I think this today's day and age, I'm really happy to hear that that was the theme. Because I think in, th- in this day and age, there's this preoccupation with perfection, and we really got to get away from it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, in- appreciate your lines. I just found out I got to have a little surgery on my face. Mm-hmm. And they said, uh, they said, oh, we're going to be able to use one of your wrinkles in your forehead to, to hide something. I was like, perfect. Thank goodness that wrinkle is there. I'm glad I, I, I'm older and I got them, and it's perfect. Perfect timing. But it's true, you know, just it, be in the moment. Be true to God. And, and Millet, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, I it took me a long time to appreciate the role of the Holy Spirit in my life because because it's ethereal. You don't feel it. You don't see it. And you sometimes you don't realize that, you know, that smart thing that came out of your mouth, like your husband was saying, I, I know that wasn't in my brain. No. Some, something else did this. And I think that's, I think all of us in our lives can can remember to some time like that. For sure. Not you, Carrie, because you're always perfect. But No, gosh, <laughs> no, far from it. Far from it. So, <laughs> thanks, Mike. <laughs> um, she blushes. <laughs> we are, we, I know you can't see this on the podcast. So, um, we had such a, an amazing experience in the diocese as different churches. I like to just hear if you can pick out a key moment and elaborate on a little bit, you know, just not one sentence, but what, what was that moment like for each of you that's like, yes, this is the NCYC moment that I will not forget? For it, so. Well, for me, it was that moment when we had, um, when we prayed over our youth. Uh, and after that, they prayed over us as adults. Um, I think Jose saw me. I was like in tears, like oh, I was bawling, too. I my, was too. <laughs> bawling my eyes out yeah. um, because it was very, very moving sure. and appropriate. And it was, it was just, it was a lot. It was grace falling and, and I felt it. And I was just mentioning earlier about, you know, I'm going through some kind of low moment personally and maybe a burnout kind of. Mm-hmm. 
But that moment right there to with recharge. the outpouring of grace from the prayers of the youth and me praying for them too. It was it was very powerful because I grew up in that environment with my parents praying over us. Like if we were about to leave the house, my my dad would be like, you know, having his hand over me. God bless you with your wherever you're oh, going. How beautiful. And so it's a reminder to me of what my parents were. And in, in that moment, I felt close to my parents, too, even if they're not here physically. Wow. With and, me. and you know what I thought about in those moments is that was mine as well. So you said it so beautifully. But. We as youth ministers, we plan everything, oh, we yes. coordinate everything. So we can't say, and now kids, you're gonna pray over us. Like we can't say that, right. you know? So it was like a moment that we, like we couldn't plan, but was planned for us that was so needed yes. for all of us. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you, that was my favorite moment as well. And I was also in tears. I wasn't near you guys, so you couldn't see my makeup running down my face, but it was. And it was a powerful moment that I, I will also forget as well. I will not forget it. Ryan, how about, oh. No, no, I, I actually, I, I want to hear her perspective, yeah. I remember that particular moment as well. When, Carrie, you prayed over me, it was just like rain. Just, I started crying Aww. too. Because hearing words from your youth minister is different from hearing it from a teacher. It's almost like a parent, because this person is like, almost like you are to me, like Mother Mary. You're one of my mother figures in my life. So hearing what you say about me, about my faith and how I've been growing and how you see it, that was one of my highlights as well. Mm. One of um, the biggest moments for me was during adoration. And I remember when the monstrance was shown, I was just dumbfounded. It was so beautiful. I couldn't take my eyes off. It was a different kind of beautiful, not like, oh, she's beautiful. It was God is beautiful. Mm. Everything about him is. And I remember people started rushing to the stage to be closer. And I rushed to the stage and I was actually in the front line right there. And there was a girl next to me and she's crying. And I'm holding hands with my friend Theo. And I reach my hand out to her. And we're holding hands this whole time singing and just praying. And I remember getting up after, and we hugged, and almost at the exact same time said, I love you. Wow. And this girl doesn't know my name, doesn't know what church I'm from, doesn't know what state I'm from. She only knows that's my sister in Christ. Oh, wow. And knowing that she loves me, that opened my eyes so much. Knowing that she loves me, knowing that I love her, that's God right there. Yeah, that's amazing. That can only happen at, at a youth conference such yes. as this. That's incredible. And for Jose, for you? Uh, well, I'm not going to follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you might just want to go with something food yeah, related. Really yeah, 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 yeah. How was the no. bus ride? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. Th- I think this moment right now was my favorite NCYC yeah. moment because this is raw. Yeah. This is real. This is a young person. Mm-hmm talking about what they felt and what they experienced that you know and there, I'm, I'm sure there's people oh these you know you got a group of kids went to NTYC and it was all fun and games it was it's life changing mm-hmm. God works in such a way through the music through the 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 lights through the 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 um, the the pictures that they use, you know, that beautiful stained glass that depicted the story of the tr- uh, the road to, uh, to Emmaus, mm-hmm. um, everything. But I, I I remember that night at adoration, and I and everybody that I talk to, I say the same thing too. It's amazing to me that we can't go to mass and go to an, an hour and not have one cell phone ring. Mm-hmm. At least there's, there's mm-hmm. I, that's that's a guarantee that there's going to be a phone ring. But you can get a conference full of twenty thousand plus young people and their chaperones for adoration and the only thing you hear is HVAC system. Mm-hmm. That's, That's the only thing yeah. that you heard. Yeah. So that, uh, this was my favorite NCYC moment. That's awesome. So thank you for that. Yeah. I'm just happy you used a phrase like HVAC. I'm curious how many of our listeners know what that is. <laughs> Firefighter. Well, it, heating, you're heating and air conditioning. There you, there you, <laughs> so, the, um, you know, the thing that uh, listening to all of you today, um, I really hope people will avail of them, themselves, our listeners will avail, of, avail themselves of an opportunity like this, whether it's, mm-hmm. even if you're older than a youth, um, that you'll, there are other big gaps 
gatherings like this of, that are Catholic right. of nature that have some similarities. Sure. If you hear about one going on in your area or your region or it's something you can drive to, by all means do it. It's amazing how fulfilling it is to your soul. I've only ever been to one um, just because of the nature of my life, and uh, I was completely blown away by it. Mike, so. if I can, just like real quick, it's like I said last night, parents don't don't rob your kids of this opportunity. So like I've asked parents before, oh, well, can I go? Well, it's not for you, it's for the kid. You yep. know, send your, don't be afraid to send your your children who are your everything to these experiences because it makes them such better people. So I'm glad you said that, but thank you, definitely. Joe. Thank, we wanna thank all the parents for sending them yes. and for all of our listeners um, listening about this experience. NCYC is incredible and continue the prayers for the youth because the young church and the church today needs it. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks for listening, everybody, and thank you to all of our guests for coming in today. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.